Existentialism is a humanism. Well, at least that's what this famous lecture says. Uh, Jean-Paul Sartre was trying to explain to people why existentialism wasn't quite the disaster for Western civilization that these people seem to think it was. In saying that it's a humanism, he's trying to say that it continues in a great philosophical tradition, tracing back to the beginning of the Renaissance. He is also trying to explain the importance of freedom and human input into human existence. Some points of existentialism are so completely ingrained into 20th and now 21st century thinking that you really will understand that people didn't think that way before the existentialists came along. Let's take a look. Is existentialism a humanism? Is it something new? Is it something different? Is it something to be afraid of? Or is it something that is completely passe? By the end of the 1940s, existentialism had become widely dispersed in intellectual circles around the world, a particular influence in the major Western powers that had fought in World War II. I had a friend who used to argue that that's all existentialism was, was a negative reaction to World War II. Uh, we failed in the wars in, after World War I, and World War II was worse still, and oh my God. And that's part of the reason I think existentialism gets charged with this idea of just shut up, sit there, be quiet, be desperate, because there's just nothing we can do. Part of the reason people want to say there's nothing we can do is the existentialist in general, not in completeness, but in general, seems to have given up on the program of Western religion to look for a divine inspiration to make sense of things. Without divine inspiration, the, the charge is, it's as Dostoevsky says, we can do, if there is no God, then anything goes. And if anything goes, what can we do except be desperate? Further, it suggests, the, the opposition to existentialism suggests, the traditional view of the day suggested that existentialism concentrated on the bad parts of life, that, that it didn't really appreciate what it was to be human, what was glorious about being human, what was um, good about life. Uh, and that's a shame. And on top of all the, of these two, the third charge is that they don't the existentialist doesn't take life seriously. How can you be serious if you deny the divine, if you've given up on the idea of a goal for us all to progress toward? You're just trivializing everything. How dare you? Well, Sartre wants to answer each of these in turn, and he wants to answer them by beginning with this idea that existentialism is a reaction to essentialism. As I don't think I've really made clear, existentialism is not a response to the depression of war after World War II. Existentialism is a reaction to a long-term program uh, going back at least to Kant, argumentatively all the way to Plato, where a series of attempts have been made to discover what the essence of things are. 
Uh, the last great attempt at the end of the 19th century, led by Edmund Husserl, was a program called Phenomenology. And the phenomenologist tries to strip away the inessential from the phenomena it is confronted with, leaving behind just the core, the essence. And what people who did this discovered is what you wound up with as this core depended in large part on what you considered inessential. So rather than being able to say, ah, we have stripped away and leave only the essential, we discover that the essence depends largely on the person conducting the stripping. So that instead of discovering what essences were, what they discovered is that first a thing exists, is an object of experience in the world, and then it gains its essence. We give it its essence. So as I say, for Sartre, at least at this point, he's going to say existentialism is the idea that existence precedes essence. For something is, and then it is a something. Essence comes from humanity. This is why he wants to say existentialism is a humanism. However, he also wants to say that we are condemned to freedom. And by that he means not some kind of paradox. It sounds paradoxical. We are condemned to freedom. Condemned means we can't do anything about it. We're free. Surely we should be able to do something about it. But no, he, he wants to be clear. We are condemned doesn't mean there's nothing we can do about it. What it does mean is that we're going to have to confront it at some way, at some point. Our freedom is real. And that must be dealt with. So when we look at this charge of desperation, he says, no, 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 no. There's no desperation here. There's no quietism. There's no, oh, just sit in the corner and be down. No. The very heart of existentialism is that we have to bring to the world its meaning. What you think of as despair, we would call anguish. The great German philosopher, uh, Heidegger, called it angst. And that's what we tend to think of it as. When we say angst, we're talking about anxiety, about a sense that we have to do something. We feel an anguish of the need to shape reality. And we're aware that it is our shaping that is all the difference. So as we form this world, as we give these things that exist their essences, we are responsible for the outcome of this world. So it's not desperation, it's merely a sense of responsibility that the person who wants to give this whole job over to God just doesn't feel and therefore misconstrues as desperation. Now, when we turn to this idea that When we turn to this idea that it somehow is worshipful of or over-attentive to the baser things of life, uh, Sartre's going to say, well, no, 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 no. It's just we're looking at life through human eyes. We're not trying to discover what the divine plan is because there is no divine plan. 
There's merely a human plan, a human set of actions. And we then are free to shape the world. But we can't shape it into something that we're not. We can only shape it into something that's in accord with our needs and our expectations. That trying to become sort of divine creatures is just a mistake. Let us instead enjoy what we have. Celebrate being human. Now, this seems degraded to someone who is used to being something just below the angels. And that is because they have an expectation of the essences being given to them, that they will discover them, they will investigate and find them. And Sartre says, no. That would rob you of your freedom. You are free. You are condemned to freedom. You are responsible. You have to make the world. You have to shape it. You're going to have to shape it according to how you actually live. And how you actually live is wonderful and glorious. You only think it's not because you insist on trying to find some divine plan where there is none. Now, this lack of seriousness. Again, Sartre says, the charge arises out of this notion that there is something some greater plan in the universe, some greater force in the universe than human decisions, than human will. And thus we need to respond to God, or he's also responding to the communists who say, say he needs to respond to economic forces and uh, material dialectic. So it eventually winds up among the Marxists for what it's worth because he doesn't know how to answer the question. He, he tries, and, and he offers this idea that simply our values, our human values, uh, are what there is. And so when we're trying to be serious, all we can do is be true to our humanity, to be authentically who we are. The problem is Sartre doesn't want to embrace all human activity as good. He does want to condemn some human activity. But if I am authentically a mass murderer, if that is who I am in my innermost being, when I define myself in the world, when I react to the things around me and I discover what I really want to do is kill just as many people as I can, He'd like to condemn that as inauthentic. He'd like to say, no, 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 you can only embrace life. Well, why? If I am free? Well, you can't make everybody want to do that. Well, hang on a second here. I realize that in my assigning essences to the world, I am suggesting it as a program for us all to adopt, that our interaction will... Uh, cause us either to adopt it or not. But the person who suggests something different than what I would like to have suggested still has to be considered. We can't just throw the baby out with the bathwater. If we're going to have freedom, then everyone's freedom counts. To thine own self be true, says Polonius. You can be false to no man. But if I'm truly a liar, I, all I can do is be false to everyone. And this is ultimately the challenge. See, if Sartre is willing to say freedom is not absolute, freedom is limited to what a human being can and cannot do, 
then whatever it is that is essentially human, it cannot be that we assign our own definition without being able to include everybody in the party. That is to say, we must welcome uh, the mass murderer and the pedophile and the, the people who do all of the evil things in the world and say, your values are as good as ours. And he doesn't want to do that. I mean, if nothing else, we can go back to his World War II activities and say, do you really want to say that the collaborator with the Nazis is just as good as the person who fought against the Nazis? No, he doesn't want to say that. But how does he escape it without having some assigned value that is not assigned by human beings. Now, bad word choice there. Some assigned collection of qualities. Yeah, that, I like that better. Because here's the point, here's the point. Now, that assignment doesn't have to come from the divine, it can come from the world in which we live. That we know what works for life. We know what works for society. We know what works for culture. And we can choose those things to value freely. But once we've done that, we have done that in line with being human. And there's more to being human than being free. For that reason, it looks like we may have gone past Sartre, that what Sartre demands, this, this absolute freedom uh, that, that creates such anxiety, just may be more uh, a, a dream, uh, a uh, misunderstanding, if you will, of the world. As I say, that's why Sartre wound up moving on to a more Marxist view, was he saw the need to describe things in terms of society, in terms of uh, economy, and to abandon absolute freedom. Now, he didn't want to go all the way to the kind of um, purely um, deterministic view of economic materialism, but without it, there's no way to close the door to the person we'd all like to describe as bad. And there are, believe it or not, a few things everybody wants to describe as bad. As I say, the mass murderer, the cannibal, the pedophile, blah, 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 blah. We always find that people want to define themselves out of being bad. Um, when he talks elsewhere about anti-Semitism, and he says the anti-Semite is being inauthentic because the anti-Semite wants to say of the Jew, the Jew is different than me, therefore it is an other, and therefore I can condemn that person. And he wants to say, well, no, 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 there isn't any difference. You're, you're just, you're, you're quibbling over a name, and, and things are more than names. Well, if freedom is absolute, if existence precedes essence, if we give essence in our choices, why are those choices unacceptable? Why is the anti-Semite wrong, the mass murderer, the cannibal, the pedophile, all these other people that pretty much every culture has labeled wrong? Because they'll come around, those people who've done these things, and they'll tell you, well, no, 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 I'm not that guy. No, no, you misunderstand what I'm doing here. So this is not cannibalism like I'm just eating people. No, 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 no. I'm embracing the, the manna of, of the dead and, and absorbing their powers into me. That's not cannibalism. That's understanding how the ball works. I'm not a mass murderer. Those people deserve to be killed. That was a murder. Murder is an unjustified killing. These killings were justified. and Therefore, I am not a mass murderer. 
we define away those things. And if we are the makers of the definitions, if it is purely our choice and our choice only that makes the definition then there doesn't seem to be an escape of uh, essentially trivializing the whole existential program. The existentialist wants to create a world of responsibility, wants to create a world uh, where the fact that you are free places a responsibility on you much greater than anything that comes from any religion. In religion, you can always fall back on the divine, on tradition, on your documents. In existentialism, it's you. You're the whole game. You make the choices. You make the world. It is the ultimate expression of responsibility, the ultimate expression of seriousness. But how to escape the problem of negating some choices and accepting others? Is existentialism a humanism? I guess the question is looking at what is a humanism. A humanism is a system of thought that takes the human being and the human experience as central to human life. Again, this is something we all consider so trivial today, we don't realize that it's a strange new world that accepts that. For much of human history, it is the experience of the divine that defines everything. We're not important. It is what the divine says is important. It's not how we live. Our life is trivial, meaningless, unimportant. We only have to go through the steps that have been laid out for us by that divine force that guides things, and we'll be fine. And Sartre has said, <laughs> It hadn't happened yet. Maybe there isn't anything to guide us. We see from our analysis metaphysically that perhaps there is no core, that we make the core. Now the problem becomes, what is the core of being human? Is it just freedom? Or is there something more? And if there is something more, then we're not free to define that something more. It comes to us as a given in the world. Well, I hope you understand now why existentialism was attractive, how it's infiltrated your thinking without you even knowing it, and why it is not as considered as important an influential school today as it was a few years ago. hope of giving you something to think about, something to talk about. Keep on talking philosophy. <laughs>